I'm Michael Jordan with AB Friendly Company, and you're at the Underground Meadery. Today we're going to make a clover mead. I've already kind of got everything started and set up so we can get right through this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start off with a plum cherry stone fruit mead. When you make a mead, you should be drinking a mead. All right, so let's get started. Let's pull out our uh, index box. And out of the recipes, we're pulling out a clover mead. Two pounds of clover honey. One gallon of spring water. One pack of yellow star yeast. Brewing device. Airlock. We're using a balloon. Starting gravity, hydrometer, temperature gauge, coffee pot. All right. On the bottom of this, I'm going to go ahead and start the date. So the date that you start brewing, please put it on the bottom of your index card. We're looking for a 36-day to 46-day turnaround on this mead. So let's go ahead and get started right off the bat. I got my coffee pot. I put three cups of hot water in, in, in my batch. That means I'm putting a cup of water, cup of water, cup of water for three cups of hot water to dissolve all my honey. So as I've already started, I went ahead and I dumped some honey directly into my jug. Let me get the next one in so you can see how we do this. Now if your honey is not as runny as this, boil some water, open the lids, set it in some hot water. Don't boil the honey. Don't microwave your honey, for God's sakes. But get it so it's nice and runny so you can get it in your jugs. The runnier it is, the easier it is to dissolve when we add the hot water. I just give it a little twist and lift. Now I'm going to add about a cup of hot water to my container. I always squeeze my plastic jug containers tight and then put the lid on them because as you watch as we shake they pop right out because they build pressure from the hot water and the sugar. Get all your honey dissolved. Now, as an average rough estimate for every pound of honey I put in, I get about 5% alcohol. So this is going to finish out at about 9 to 11% alcohol. One reason to keep all your caps, remember to put a little pressure on it, because when I shake this hot water up with this sugar, it expands right out on out. Let the pressure off a little bit. Super easy. And that was it. We've made meat. Right? I'm going to add a little bit of hot water to this so we can dissolve the, all the honey in the base. I'm 
So there's my three cups of water that we use. Remember to keep your lid to your jugs. Now I'm dissolving the sugar inside my jug. Remember the whole object is to use as much of the sugar in both containers as much as possible. Like I said, this is going to finish out between 9 and 11 percent. and dissolved honey right on. Now the next step is just to add the water. If you don't have a steady hand, you could use a funnel. Now, I do want to tell you one thing, right? First thing people always ask me is, Michael, you didn't sanitize anything. Well, my glass jug that we're using for our fermentation advice came out of a dishwasher that's just below me under hot water. Brought it directly out, went to use it. Spring water came from water jugs, especially spring water. Right, so there's no sanitation that was recently necessary. And we all know, honey's pretty sanitary as it comes. All right, there's a good mix there. We'll go ahead and tap this off. I filled it all the way to the foam to the top. I'm going to put my lid on one more time here. I just want to make sure that the honey is now through all the water that we put in, right? Because we're going to take a hydrometer and a temperature reading here. Wow, that was super easy, huh? Speaking of easy. Now, don't fill your testing device halfway, get it at least three quarters of the way full. That way your hydrometer doesn't fall away the bottom and you can't get it out. But that's what we're going to do now is we're going to take a hydrometer reading. Now remember I told you that we were looking between 11 and 9% alcohol, basically 5% alcohol for every pound. Let's go ahead and see what we got. Now on a hydrometer, as it sits higher up, the more alcohol potential you have. The lower it sits, the lower alcohol percentage. As we start out, the yeast will eat the sugar and this will eventually start dropping and dropping and dropping. The objects to get it to drop to zero, giving us the highest alcohol content. But sometimes we stop it depending on as we taste it to the alcohol necessary for taste and texture. We're sitting at right now. As the foam says, 1.080. So on my index card, I'll be writing that right down. Starting gravity, 1.080. Let's see what that reads. 
10.5% alcohol. So if we get this to drop all the way down in that vessel, we're going to have about 10% alcohol. Basically, 5% alcohol per pound. I'm going to take a quick temperature reading. I like my temperature between 68 and 78 degrees. 75 to 77 is about the ultimate temperature for yeast. But you must read the yeast packages that you're using, and mostly it's acclimated to room temperature. Room temperature where I'm usually out here is about 72 degrees. So hopefully we've got it about a good room temperature where the yeast will be effective. It's at 73.2. So we're at a good temperature to drop yeast. Now, if you notice, I drop my yeast and then I add this. This cylinder will mix that yeast back up inside that batch. Sometimes people take this cylinder and pour it in a cup and add their yeast to the cup, getting what they call a starter yeast, and then dump that yeast in. This is called a dry yeast drop. There you have it. Super simple and easy. Right, I will take my lid though, one more time, just to make sure my yeast is mixed up inside the batch, and give it just a good jostle. This is the point where you put your airlock on. <laughs> nice, simple, easy balloon from the dollar store. The reason I like using a balloon is if this activation gets really crazy on us, it'll blow up inside the balloon and not all over the ceiling and all over my floor. So one reason why I like using the balloons is an airlock. Now what we need to do is go over our recipe one more time just to make sure we've got everything. Clover mead. We did add two pounds of clover honey. We added one gallon of spring water and we added our yellow pack yeast. Boy, it doesn't get any simpler than that. I will take my tape. And I'm going to mark my jug. On the bottom of my card, I will write today's date. We have our starting gravity and our date. We're looking for a 36 day to 46 day turnaround. It doesn't get any simpler than that. Hey, if you've been watching 52 meads in a year and have watched all of our programming, you've seen fermentation devices, types of yeast, books, all kinds of lore. You're getting ready to join us on an adventure. Here's your first mead for the first of the year. Hey, share this with your friends. Post this on Facebook. Let's get almost a thousand likes if we can. Share this with a lot of people. If you want to tune in more and get more information, catch us on the Underground Meadery on Facebook. Or email us at abfriendlycompany at gmail.com. I'm Michael Jordan, and thanks for joining us at the Underground.